Dear Warren Gatland, when I heard the news you're coaching the British and Irish Lions, I just couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe you're still coaching, you old bugger. I thought you retired 15 years ago. Anyway, was I, I remember like it was yesterday. 1984, I ran onto the field for Padamahoe Piranhas under 55 kgs. You took me under your big fluffy wing and you whispered into my eardrum cavity, you do what I tell you, boy. From that day on, those words changed my life. Now look at you. You're leading your pride of British and Irish lines into a gruelling battle this weekend at the Fortress Eden Park against Shag and his men in black. And what a hell of a battle it's going to be. Oh, we've had our ups and downs, Warren. And the line outs. Oh, we've clashed heads. And the media scrums. We've even given each other the cold shoulder. Courtesy of Sonny Bill and Vernu Polo. But that doesn't change what you mean to me, Mr. Gatland. You're a father figure, a mentor, a friend, and according to your wife, Trudy, on one notable occasion after a few too many pinos and a side plate of haggis, an incredible and gentle lover. How's Trudy, by the way, mate? Send him my love. Well, good to get that off the chest. Quite emotional, um, obviously, when you've got a connection with someone uh, in the past, but uh, whoa, hell of a game this last weekend, fellas. What are you eating, Jam? This is a nut bar. Thanks, thanks, Steph. Lad, Sonny Bill Williams, the third red card in history. Williams gives the shoulder to Ant Watson's mush, an absolute game changer. We're down to 14 men for 56 minutes. Kino leaves the field to make room for deputant Lamape. Anton Leonard Brown to the side of the scrum. Shakespeare couldn't have written a more dramatic script. Yeah, it was wonderful, wasn't it? And uh, it did deserve the red card. I can't believe the conversations all week. New Zealand, you've got to grow up. Um, people trying to find reasons that we lost. I'll give you the reason. The men in red were good. Look, I don't know whether the Lions were that good, to be honest, Staff. I think uh, the fact that they took 77 minutes to actually get in front, I'm not so sure they were good. They created a lot of uh, offences. You could argue they possibly should have had a red card themselves. They had a yellow. They lost the penalty count but they did score two tries. Aaron Smith actually said something really interesting. He said, this is a massive week prep-wise, and it feels very similar to the prep that they had before the Rugby World Cup final, Grant. Yeah, absolutely. Look, um, Aaron Smith's a wonderful player, but I'd be playing TJ Perinara to start the game myself against Connor Murray, two very similar-sized blokes, and it's very physical. And um, just my humble opinion... Oh, I hate to disagree with a great man. I'm normally on the same page as Grant, but what are you thinking, Grant? Lads, what was our thoughts on, on the referee? Yeah, he was okay. He was all right. They're a little more pedantic, aren't they? Um, and he had a lot of controversial moments to try and sort out. Now, that's not his fault. Uh, I thought he, in points of law, he was, he was pretty good. And, uh, of course, we get another one this week, too. <laughs> another Frenchie. This is going to be fun, isn't it? This is great. And I was actually talking to a bloke who got to meet the referees. Could we lose this? Could we lose our first line series? Uh, we haven't lost at Eden Park since 1994. We all know that. Only one Lions team has ever won at Eden Park. That was in 1959, and that was because the All Blacks led 3-0 and probably sat on their lead. Not even the great 1971 Lions team could win at Eden Park. It was only 14 all, but they wrapped up the series. So look, uh, the stats say that the All Blacks win. I 100% agree with Nisbo. Look, um, stats are what, what I've made my life on. And uh, I, I now forgive you for the Aaron Smith uh, comment there, Nisbo. But yeah, the, the stats do not lie. Oh, well, let's pray like hell that the boys get up because um, I'm nervous and I'll be there in the stands probably about 10 beers deep, so it's going to be a great day for me. You guys will be, uh, you guys are both doing dry July, aren't you? So it's a different kettle of fish. Well, compared to you, I'm dry the whole time, mate. You've been, Nisbo, he invited me for a beer before the game and I said, yeah, I'll come down for a beer. What time? And he said, 3 o'clock Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where, where are we sitting? What are we thinking? I'm going to stick with the All Blacks by 21 to 30. I know the weather's not flash. It's a great drainer though, Eden Park. So All Blacks, 21 to 30 at $4.50 to finish on a high. You beauty. I like your way of thinking, Staff. I'm just going to come down a rung of the ladder and I'm on the same, kind of on the same page. This is the 
uh, 10 point winning team in margin. I'm going 11 to 20 and the only reason I'm doing that is because I think the weather could in the end play a bit of a part in this so maybe the scores are going to be a little bit closer. I think the All Blacks will win 11 to 20 for me. <laughs> I'm going for the jugular and um, I'm branching out a bit again. It's called the game pack option 42 and it's number five here lines to score the first points under 43.5 points for the total game and also New Zealand to win by 12 and a half so uh, that's paying $11 so all three things have to happen okay yes that's all right staff also there's a, a bit of a promo on at the moment mate yeah look yeah I, I've managed to twist the arms of the marketing people there's so many people watching this and God knows why it must be. Um, I think when people watch you, Ant, um, they feel good about themselves, and that's why they <laughs> tune in and watch. Um, but yeah, we've got a bit of a promo code. So if you've never had an account and you open one, uh, there's a promo code box there. Just type in the word balls. Yep. Yep. Put in the word balls. Um, put in up to fifty dollars, and we'll match it. So if you open an account, deposit fifty, we'll put fifty in as well. So. Uh, Ant's bet, not sure, but you could take both mine and Nisbo's, use your money for mine, Tabby's money for Nisbo's, and you get an 11 to 30 spread. Uh, any last words of advice we want to give to Shag before the weekend, boys? No, just do what you do normally. Um, when it comes to these really important games, uh, they never let us down, the All Blacks, and they're not going to do it on the Saturday either. I think Shag, um, continue taking your Valium. Uh, because the post-match interviews are magnificent. He always sounds like he's just woken up, but behind that persona is a very alert man, a very astute rugby brain. Trick them up, do a dance, win by 21 to 30. Steve Hansen. Yeah, good man. Very well said. Thank you very much, fellas. Well, it is actually the last episode of Head, Heart and Balls, which is quite emotional, obviously, for me, because I lose my job after this. But it's been great doing work with you, fellas. And hopefully that uh, hopefully this ticks over to another sport in the near future. But thanks very much for your company. Up the ABs. Good on you, Shag. And um, love you too, Warren Gallon. It's been hell of a tour. We'll see you in another 12 years. Probably not. But uh, you go well out there, mate. Thanks, lads.